Hello, I'm Dave Lawrence from the California Type Foundry. Check out our fonts at calfonts.com, and I hope you enjoy this Font Lab 7 video. Hi, it is Dave Lawrence from the California Type Foundry. In this quick start video, I'm going to show you how to make a variable font. Um, it's, this video is a quick start one, but it is a little bit longer just because the process is a little bit more involved. Okay, so I want you to open up a new font and make a rectangle L into here. And now what you want to do is make sure that you have certain panels open. So you want to have the variations panel open. You want to have the layers and masters panel open over here. The elements panel, we're also going to open up that one. Okay. Okay. So let's go back out here. Let's go to info. So the first thing we have to do is make multiple masters. So I am going to first add an axis. So go over to here, add a weight axis, because that's what we're going to use. And now we are going to duplicate the uh, master and copy the glyphs, which in this case is just going to be our L. And we're going to make a thin one. Let me try that again. We are going to make a, a bold one, or a black and uh, put that there. Okay, couple things that we have to do now. Um, so these are them. We want to adjust, we can change the order by holding this down and dragging it up here so we have thin, regular, then black. Okay, here we have it. nothing changes over here. So we're gonna go back in, I'm gonna go into the thin and I think my, I wanted to make this around 30. Okay, so this one is 30. Uh, and of course, you would change the side bearings and all that stuff too. This one we're going to move a bit. Um, and we're going to make this 290. Okay, so it's pretty dark. So now if we go here, you can see this changing here and the, the instance layer, which is in red. If I go to the instance layer, you can see how it changes between these areas. Oh, and it's also doing some extrapolation over there. I mean, with a simple, like the L, it looks pretty good, but with other things, that's not gonna look so good. And that's because we have to change some things in our axis. For the purposes of this video, just make this wide and make this thin, okay? We're gonna go back into the font info. And now we have to start, uh, let's just check out our uh, masters and see. 400, 900, wait. Okay, there we go. Um, now what we are gonna do, and let me just change the uh, it back, organized by weight. Okay, the axis, let's, so there are two things. This one is our design, what we are making it look like. Um, so what you wanna do, usually with weights here, is you want to use the actual weight value. So if your regular is 85, then you want to make the, and this, this goes from 30 to 290, like ours does, of thickness, then you want to just call this 30 and 290, because that's going to help you keep track of everything. This is what the user sees when they're in a, a CSS program or when they're in the program like InDesign or all that. So you want to keep that sort of in the standard area, which is thin is equal to 100, black is equal to 900. So we're going to want to make this a range from uh, 100 to 900. Okay, so let's get started with that. So we're going to click into the graph, and this all needs to be modified. So remember what we said is that the design coordinates, we want to actually follow the, the actual weight. So we're going to have to make that a 30, and we are going to have to make this a... Um, nine a uh, 290 uh let me see here um if we scale locations that's going to change this here now 
Okay, and remember that a thin is equal to 100. And see, our, um, our masters are getting changed here, so we want to change those back. So we know that this master is really going to be at a 30 here, okay, and at 100, okay? Our a Roman, we said was going to be at an 85, so we want to make that here. We're going to have to adjust that. Basically, we want this at 485. There we go. Okay, pull that down, change that to 900, and that should be good. Okay, so the last thing that we need to change is we need to change this point to 290. Okay, now we're going to hit OK. We have a problem because when these values are specified that the thin is going to be 100, that is specified in design units. But this is really only 30 units wide, so we have to change this to 30. We're just going to make a couple. Maybe we'll make the thin, the a light, which we can call that. Well, let, let's say that a light goes up to 55. And then a regular, we said it was 85. And then let's delete most of this stuff except for maybe a bold and the black. We'll delete this one too. See, you have to have these in quotes when they're two separate words. <clears throat> okay, so we know the black was 290. And the bold, let's just say that is what, whatever, 160. Okay, well, let's hit apply. We are going to get the instances from the axis. So let's grab them there. So, it, and this is just a visual check to see if it sort of looks right. So that sort of looks right. Now let's try pulling this here and it is pulling back and forth. Um, this is a really long one there, so it works a little bit slower there than there. Okay, if uh, so, so I think that's about all we need for that. Uh, we'll come back if I forgot something. So we're going to go to variable TT. We're going to make this one down here. So we're going to put it into library application support Adobe slash fonts, and that is going to give us. It's going to put the font in the right spot where a, a program like Adobe InDesign is going to use it. Okay, so now we're going to export into there. And let me see. I can't remember what I named this thing. So we'll go to names, Font Lab Masters Demo. We're going to go to the characters, and we're going to go Font Lab, Font Lab Masters Demo Black. Okay, so let's check that out. Um, oh, black is too big. So let's lower her, his point size. Okay, so now that has our different uh, masters that we had in there, bold and black. And then when the user scrolls, the weight these weights are actually going to match up with the correct numbers. So let's just go back to Font Lab. See, the correct numbers for these weights, th these are the correct numbers, and these should match up where light's going to be 300, regular's going to be 400, bold is 700, and et cetera. Um, we are going to want to, um, we would have to also check. So you can see, if we go back into axes, you can now put the instances up, and that will show you where your different things are, are matching up. Okay, so we're a little bit, we're a little bit wrong. <laughs> But you get the idea. So then you can tweak this graph. You can put an extra point here. And if you want the 55 to match up with 300, then we go and stick that in there like that. So this is, it just takes uh, that. And then to get this curve exactly right, it just takes some time and tweaking on your part to just see exactly how you want it to look. Okay. You would do the same thing if you added a, a different axis. Uh, um, I can't remember if I said before, but if you usually want to keep this the same as the user range, uh, a lot of and not do this. If you are doing something like optical sizes, let me just show you in one of my multiple master guys um, in Ferrara. See, I wanted this to be right on top of this one, and if you um, 
have, but the thing is that the stems are different. So that's why I didn't really want to name it with a stem. See, this one's 89, whereas this medium is 112, which is a pretty big difference. So, so I just went with putting the, uh, the numbers exactly the same. So this has two axes and I've specified them like this. And then I've adjusted each of those for all my different instances here. Okay, so that's a quick start video. <laughs> you are now ready to start making your variable font. Thanks so much for watching. This is my FontLab 7 series, and I will see you in the next video.